In this presentation, we will enter data into the cash receipts journal related to cash receipts. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. The information will be on the left side. We're going to enter that information into the cash receipts journal here. And when we sum up that cash receipts journal at the end of the process, we will then have a journal entry in the general journal that will sum up the activity for, in this case, the month that will then be posted to the general ledger. This being the general ledger, finally being posted to the trial balance or using the general ledger to create the trial balance after that process. Scrolling back to the left, we looked past at the sales journal. The cash receipts journal will be a bit more complex because the sales journal is very specific, meaning we're only going to be recording stuff that's a sale on account. Cash receipts journal will often be very specific depending on the type of company, but can be more broad when we think about the cash receipts journal in general. In other words, if you're using a cash receipts journal and it's a process where we're going to do it more by hand without an electronic system, it's possibly the case because we're going to make a lot of sales for cash and therefore we're going to have the cash receipts journal, which will basically be sales and cash. And that would be a pretty straightforward sales journal. But anything that is a cash collection will be a sales receipts journal. And of course, there could be many other things other than a sales process for a cash collection. So typically we would think of a sales journal as the receipt of cash. Anytime we get cash, we will record it here. Usually those will be hopefully sales for cash or the collection of uh, cash after a sale has been made on account, meaning the collection of accounts receivable. There are many other things that could result in the sale, however, and uh, we'll take a look at those as we go. So this problem will list a lot of different transactions other than these two main transactions so that we can see uh, what other types of things will be there. Those are typically the more complex types of things that can cause problems when doing a test question and in practice. So remember that the journals are used if we don't have as sophisticated a system, we can use something like a journal to record the activity for a month, saving the time of us recording each transaction with a debit and credit as we go posting them, creating the trial balance as we go. In this case, we'll do that at the end after we record everything. If we do have an automated system, it's still good to know what the cash receipts journal is because it we often want to print reports in a similar fashion, a, a report from a computerized system in a fashion that would be similar to a sales receipt type journal. It's also just good to know different type of accounting systems, what can be similar, what will differ when we have different systems. So we're going to start with 7-1. We've got the owner deposits money into the business bank account. So the owner's putting money into the bank account. This is going to be more of a description account and if we are doing something with accounts uh, receivable we want to list out the customer there otherwise uh, we're going to put some type of extra description here so it's going to be the owner it's going to be putting the money in and another explanation we're just going to put owner investment and we're going to say the amount of debit this is always going to be a column that will be used in the cash receipts journal because the debit to cash is what we're doing here. It's, it's a cash receipts journal. Therefore, we will always have the debit to cash. Typically, then we will have some other credits. I'm going to put the 3000 here. Typically, we will have some other credit and that will be it if there's only two accounts involved. However, it is possible that we have more than two accounts involved. In this case, we only have two. The other is going to be the owner capital account. Now, we don't have that listed here because it's not common that owner capital would be a cash receipts. So typically we'll have something like an other account and we'll have to break that out at the end when we make the journal entry, meaning go through the other accounts and break them out to the proper place uh, during the journal entry transaction. So the other side is going to be a 3000 to the credit in this other section. Now we're just going to keep doing this until we get to the end and then we'll sum this up. So we're going to say the next transaction, 7-1, borrowed money from the bank. So we could say that it's going to be the bank. We might list the bank out there. It's going to be an explanation, possibly a bank loan we took out. The amount that we got, 8000 8000 for the cash. So that's going to be the cash. And note that I'm just tabbing through here to move to the, to the side for Excel purposes. And then the other side of it, once again, is not our normal transaction. It's not going to be the sales transaction. 
It's not a cash receipt for a sale made in the past and getting the receivable. Therefore, it's going to go into other. Again, the credit's going to be going to other. We'll have to break it out later into something like loans payable. So 8,000 is going to go into other. That's the two sides. Note the debit and the credit basically reflected here with the two transactions, but not in a debit and credit journal entry format, just in more of a list format. And then we're going to go to 79. And we're going to say that receive cash for work that will be done in the future. So we could list the name here. We don't have the name there. So we're going to list the account, which will be unearned revenue. So instead of listing the name of, of the customer, we'll put unearned revenue. We don't necessarily need the name of the customer here because we already received the money. So we're not getting a collection. We don't need to put it in the subsidiary ledger. However, uh, you know, we obviously we do need to track who we need to do the work for in the future as well. It's going to be advanced payment or a payment in advance of the work being done. And that's going to be a liability. 360 is how much we got. And this, again, for normal transactions, this is probably going to be something that's not normal for most businesses. However, if we're in a business that like sells uh, tickets to a concert or something like that, then every ticket sale we get would probably be going to unearned revenue. And therefore, we would have another column for unearned revenue. But in our case, we're going to say that our normal transactions aren't such that we get paid before we do the work. That's more of a specialized industry that's uh, somewhat unusual for most industries. So we're going to put that once again into the other credit column. Next, we've got 720, 720. Uh, completed job for S company, received 250, will receive 300 at a later date. So this time we're going to put the name here. We're going to say this is S company. And we're going to say the explanation is it's a sale. So sales is, is what happened. And we, we got cash. Now we got 250. The, the problem here is that uh, we got 250 of uh, 350 and we're owed the other 300. Now, if you see this, you might say, hmm, this should go in the sales journal because we made a sale. But anytime we get cash, we're typically going to put it into the cash receipts journal and the sales journal will only be used for sales on account, sales for accounts receivable, sales that we have not gotten paid yet for. This case, we got paid partially and we have an accounts receivable component. So this may not always be in uh, a problem that will be in a cash receipts journal, but it's one to take a look at. And the idea here being anytime we get cash receipts, it's going to go in the cash receipts journal. So even though it's a sale here, even though there's two accounts affected, we'll put it into the cash receipts journal. Now the other side of this transaction is going to go to partially sales is going to be the credit. That's going to be for all of it, the 300 plus the 250. So I can put a, a formula 300 plus the 250, that being the 550. Now we can't put the accounts receivable in this column because that's a credit and we're not crediting accounts receivable. We're actually debiting accounts receivable. This column would be used if, for example, we got the 250 on payment for a sale made in the past due to us that then being in accounts receivable. In this account case, accounts receivable is going to be going up with a debit, which we don't have here. Therefore, it's going to go into the other account. So this will be the 300. So the debits and credits, debit 250 to cash, debit the other account, accounts receivable once we break it out, and then the credit to the sales. So once we sum all these columns up, we'll, we'll uh, record this journal entry as one transaction for all of this data. Next, we're going to have 727. We said complete a job for L company invoiced uh, 700 received 200 and account to be received in the future 500. So same thing. We're going to say this is going to be for L company. And because we got cash, it's going to be in the cash receipts journal rather than the sales journal. Although it is a sale that we have made. Uh, the amount of cash that we're going to get is 250. The sales amount is going to be the 250 plus the 350 or the 700. And then we're going to put the other not into the receivable because that's a credit, but into the debit amount for the receivable. And that will be for the uh, 500. So once again, the, the transaction being we got 250 cash, debit cash. We got 500 accounts receivable, debit accounts receivable, credit the sales of 
uh, the 700. Let's look at that one more time. Actually, we had the sale of the 700. We received only 200, 200 here. And then we've got the 500. So we debit cash, we got the 200. We're going to, to debit the accounts receivable for the 500 that is owed to us. And the sale we made was for 700 as the credit. All right, next one, we're gonna say on 727, uh, receive cash from M company for work done in the past. So we did work in the past. So once again, we're going to name this out. This is M company, not very creative names, but that's our customer who that's who we are getting the money from. And this is going to say we, we receive cash on account or we receive cash for work done in the past, received cash uh, in relation to accounts receivable. So we're going to say that this is going to be 727. We got received cash from M company 150. So we'll put that here 150. And this time it's going to go into this accounts receivable because now we received the cash at uh, this point in time. So we're going to put the 150 here in accounts receivable, crediting the accounts receivable, bringing it back down. That being the normal type of thing you would expect to see in the cash receipts journal. So then we're gonna say 730, uh, receive cash from P company for work done in the past. So same type of idea. We're gonna put here P company. That's who we got the money from. And it's gonna be the same one. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna right click and copy and paste one, two, three, or we can paste either way really <laughs> right there. And then we're gonna say it's the 425. And once again, this would be the more normal transaction. If we are in a type of business where we uh, invoice people first, get paid later, then typically we would have the debit going to the 425 cash, the credit going to the receivable. And this column would probably be the most normal column for that type of business then. Now we're going to sum this up. So I'm going to put the total down here. We'll skip a line this time. Skip a line this time. So we'll total this up. So I'm going to sum up this column and then just sum up all the columns. So we will say equals SUM, double click the sum function and highlight this entire column, the 3000 all the way down. So we're just adding that up. So the 3000 plus 8000 plus the 350, 360, 250, 200, 150, and the 425 gives us the 12,385. We can pull that across. Notice if you put our cursor here and pull that across, it will sum up the rest of the columns. I'm going to do it one by one just to emphasize we're doing the same thing. So I'm going to say equals the SUM of this column. I'm going to sum up the entire column, even though there's no numbers up there. I'm not just going to stop here uh, just because if any changes happen, it's just good practice to sum up the entire column. So we're going to say, okay, there's that. We'll do that all the way around equals the sum and we will sum up this entire column and two more times equals sum double click the sum function highlight those columns and one more time equals the sum of these columns so i'm going to double underline this now i'm going to highlight these column these uh, numbers and we're going to go to the home tab we're going to go to the font group. We're going to go to the underline and double underline. So that's what we have here. These are our bottom line numbers. So that's our cash receipts journal. We've recorded the activity related to receipts of cash for the entire period, the entire month. In this case, we could do it for a day, a week, a month. We of course did it for the month. In this case, we don't have a whole lot of transactions. In this case, if we were talking about a, a type of company that has a lot of transactions on a daily basis, especially if they were transactions that were just basically getting cash and sales, a journal like this can be very helpful and just record this information very quickly. So now we're just going to do one journal entry to post this out. So we're going to go over to our general journal and construct a journal entry as of the end of the month, recording this all at one time. So 730. First, we're going to say we got cash. We got cash for this 12385 We know if we look at the trial balance, Cash is a debit balance account. It's an asset account. We're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So I'm going to copy the checking accounts up here, right click and copy. I'm going to paste that one, two, three and C eight, right click and paste one, two, three, just the format. We could type it in there. I like uh, pasting it in there, putting the formatting in there. 
Next, we're going to have the accounts receivable is a credit. So let's build that and go back over here. Accounts receivable, that's our second account. It has a debit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, crediting it to make it to go down. So I'm going to copy the accounts receivable. I'm going to put that underneath, right click and paste one, two, three values only. We could indent as well, home tab alignment and increase the indent or double click and spacebar three times. And the amounts here, we should have put the amount in the checking account. So this is AD8. It's going to be 12385. Make this a little larger so we can see it. And then we are going to have the credit here of, I'm going to put a negative 575. And there's our credit. Then we're going to have the sales. So here's the sales amount. It's going to be a credit, as we can see. If we look on our trial balance, here's the sales that we're going to call it revenue down here. It has a credit balance. So we're going to do the same thing to it, which is another credit, increasing sales, increasing revenue, as normally is the case. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in AC10, right click and paste one, two, three. I'm going to go to the home tab, alignment, increase indent. Now note that the sales account could be called sales. It could be called, um, it could be called revenue. It could be called income. Sales is typically used for a merchandising company, but it's often going to be something uh, that we use for these types of journals. We have the sales journal. So uh, we're calling it the sales account here. And then we're going to have the other account. Now here's the complex account, of course, because we can't just take the total for the other account because we don't know which account. This is where we just put other numbers and uh, because we didn't have any other column to put them to. <laughs> so we have to break this out one by one, line by line. So we're going to start with this 3000. Say that 3000 there is an owner investment. So the owner investment, if we scroll back over here, we're, we're going to say that the owner investment is capital that was invested. So it's going to obviously be a credit here. So in capital is a credit balance account representing what is owed to the owner. We owe the owner more because the owner put money into it and therefore it should go up by doing the same thing to it, another credit. So I'm going to copy that, right click the capital copy, put the, that in AC11, right click and paste one, two, three. I'm going to go to the home tab, alignment, increase indenting, and there we have that. Now I'm going to add the revenue, which I didn't add before for some. Uh, we have the accounts receivable. The sales is here. That's going to be this amount in the sales. That's going to be a credit of 1250. And we could pull this over too. Let's do this again. Let's do this with formulas. I'm going to delete this just to show a formula. If we were in AD uh, 8, we could say equals and point to that 12,385. Now, if we're in AE9, we want to make this a negative, and that's a positive. So instead of hitting equals, I'm going to put negative and point to that 575, and that'll bring over the 575 and flip the sign. Then in the revenue, we want to bring the revenue here, which is sales. And once again, we want to flip the sign. So instead of equals, we will say negative and point to that 1,250 and enter. And then we've got uh, now the capital where we're going to put this 3000, not the total, because we have to break this other account up one by one. So we are in AE11. We're going to put negative of that 3000 and enter. Next one, we've got the 8000 here. That was for a bank loan. So we got 8000 for a bank loan. What will be the other side? We got the cash. That's what was recorded. It's included in this number. And then the other side of it is going to go to some kind of uh, notes payable or loans payable uh, to the bank. In this case, we've got accounts payable, notes payable, interest payable. It looks like the notes payable will be the one. It's a liability. It needs to go up by doing the same thing to it. Another credit in this case. So I'm going to copy that. We'll put that in AC12. Right click and paste one, two, three. Then home tab, alignment, increase indent. And now we are in AE12. We're going to pick up that 8,000. So we will say negative instead of equal. Point to that 8,000. Uh, Bring it over. Flip in the sign. There we have that. That one has been completed. And the next one, 360. Where was that from? Unearned revenue. So unearned revenue. So once again, we know the debit. 
the debits included here, that 360 is included in this 12385 What's the credit? It can't go to revenue because we had not yet earned it. Instead, it's going to go to unearned revenue. Unearned revenue being the credit at this time. It's a liability because we owe it in the future. So we're going to say unearned revenue. Copy that. And paste that in AC13. Right click and paste. One, two, three. Then home tab, alignment, increase in dent. And we're going to pull that number over. I'm in AE13 instead of equals, negative, pointing to that 360 and enter. So there we have that amount, and that is done. Now we just have this one. Notice we're not in balance here because the credits, if I highlight these, are at 13,185, where the debit is at 12,385. Uh, if I highlight the whole thing, it's $800 off, which is, of course, this 800. So if we scroll back over, then we need to pick up this 800. Now these two, remember, were from these two sales that had both a cash component received as well as an accounts receivable. So these two, we can use the 800 because they're both there for the same purpose, accounts receivable being debited in this case. So we need a debit to accounts receivable. So what happened here is, is this 12,385 is included uh, in, in the cash number includes these two cash numbers of 250 and 200 and then the sales or the revenue of the 550 and the 700 are included in this number and now we need to put the other component this 800 which we will put into accounts receivable so here's accounts receivable it's in ah6 i'm going to copy that right click and copy we're going to put that in ac14 right click and paste one two three and this is going to be a debit. So it's a debit here. That's what we need to be in balance. 800. Or I could say equals. <laughs> and then point to that 800 and enter. Now note that this isn't, uh, we don't have the two debits on top here. So you might want to reposition this to put the two debits on top if you're concerned about the formatting of, of it in terms of the journal entry. It's not a big concern in terms of uh, the posting or the, the functionality of it. And sometimes when you have complex journal entries like this, it may be better to have them out of order in order to have them in compliance with what's logical to go back to and see where it came from in this case in order of it from the cash receipts journal so that's that's a, a way we can record all this transaction this is one of the more complex journals and of course we have more transactions here and that's why we have to make a longer journal entry to post this out at the end of the day however a lot of cash receipts journals probably are only going to be dealing with accounts that are just sales types transactions or receipts of cash transactions. That's what we would expect to see most if we saw a lot of activity for the month for a particular type of business using this type of system. So we're going to post this out now. But the, the, the other types of transactions, of course, are the more confusing ones. So we have to touch on those transactions. So now we're going to post this out. So We've got the cash here. So cash is the first account. We're going to post this to the general ledger over here, the general ledger. So here's the cash account. Here it is on the trial balance. It's the first account on the trial balance and therefore the first account in the general ledger. We're going to be down here in AK9. AK9, we will say equals and then point to this 12,385 and enter. And that'll bring down the 12385 and post that out. We see it here in the cash receipts journal as well. Note, you could type it in there uh, as a hard-coded number, but I would rather, much rather see the formula here. Uh, you could also put equals AD8 as long as you have everything lined up in the same columns and cells as is here. Next, we're going to have the accounts receivable. Here's accounts receivable. We need to post it to the accounts receivable account here. It's the second account on the trial balance, therefore the second account on the general ledger. So the general ledger, this is a credit. So here's accounts receivable. We're on the credit side. Here's accounts receivable here, A, uh, E, uh, 9. So we're going to say equals and point to A, E, 9 or the 575 credit and enter. So this accounts receivable then going from 2070 down by the 575 to 1495. Then we have revenue. So here's revenue. Here's revenue here. So it's going to be the first blue account. It's going to be in the same order on the general ledger as its liability, equity, and then revenue. So we will scroll over to revenue. So I'm going to go assets are first, liabilities, equity, and then the income statement accounts, revenue and expenses. 
revenue is here in BB23. So within BB23, I'm going to say equals. And this time I'm going to use the arrows. So we could use the scroll bar and go back. I'm going to use the arrows and notice it just keeps changing until we stop and hit enter. So we're just going to use the arrows and go up and find that cell on AE10. So AE10, we're pulling this all the way over. If I put enter now, it pulls it over. Now, once again, you could go all the way over here to BB23 and just hard code a negative 1,250 or type in equals EAE10 here, and it will update this, this cell. Uh, I do recommend maneuvering around in Excel, however. Uh, so this is 3,320. If we scroll back over here, we see the 3,320 here, so that looks good. Next, we're going to be recording the capital account. So here's the capital account here. Here's the capital account on our trial balance. So it's the first light blue account. It's in order, assets, liability, then equity. So we're going to scroll back over assets and then liabilities and then equity. Here's the capital. It's in BB9. Uh, so we're in BB9. We will say equals. I'm going to scroll all the way to the left. And we'll go back down to that capital. There's the 3000 in AE11 and enter. So once again, you could just type in negative 3000 or equals AE11, pulling in that 3000. Scrolling back over, we see that 3000 in the capital account here. Of course, we're out of balance until we finish this process. Then we've got the notes payable. So here's the notes payable here. Here it is on the trial balance, second orange account, second liability account. It's in the same order on the general ledger, assets, and then liabilities. So we want the notes payable right there. We're on the credit side. So I'm in cell AX9, AX9. We will say equals, and then I'm going to scroll left and find this again. So I'm just scrolling left, and we're just posting this 8,000 there into the credit side and enter. So there we have it. So there's the 8,000. Here it's going up. You could type it in there or put in equals AE12. That 8,000 then also being on the trial balance. We're going to keep going down. We got the unearned revenue now. Here's the unearned revenue that we need to post. Here it is on the trial balance, the last orange account. It's in the same order on the general ledger. So it's assets and then liabilities. And then the unearned revenue, we are in the credit side. So we are in AX21. AX21, I'm going to put equals and scroll back over. And we're going to find that amount, the 360, there it is, and enter. So we pulled over that 360, scrolling back over. Here's the 360 on the trial balance. Now we're just going to record the accounts receivable. Uh, the other side of it, the debit to accounts receivable. So that's our second account once again. And so we're going to go to the second account on the uh, general ledger right here. Here's accounts receivable in AK18. And we will say equals and point to that 800 and enter. So once again, you could put the 800 there or AD14. Accounts receivable now at 2,295 matching what's on the trial balance. We should now be back in balance. If you're not in balance, go through the trial balance and check them off to these numbers and then go to the related general ledger and see that these have been posted uh, to the general ledger as they should be and make sure that the signs are going the correct way so you can see where these are all posting out uh, this little function up here you may not be able to use it if it's if, if it's locked but it's a nice feature to know about so it's in formulas here it is. I just put them into my uh, quick ribbon, add to the quick ribbon. So that's why they're up here. But they're in the formulas and this item. Okay, so now uh, there's one other piece here. We've added activity to the accounts receivable account here. And therefore, we also need to back that up with the subsidiary ledger down here. So in other words, the accounts receivable now shows that people owe us 2295 but uh, we also need to know who owes us that money and therefore break this information out by customer. So that's what we're going to do down here. And for the new transactions, this is summing up all the customers we have. It's red because this 2070 does not equal what is currently in the general ledger or on the trial balance. 
So what we're going to do is, is record this new transactions we had here. So remember, we had these two sales that in this other account went to the subsidiary ledger, and then these two to the accounts receivable. So we're going to start here. We got this uh, 300. I'm going to say I'm going to start here. We'll make that green. And we're going to say that we need to record this. This was for who's the company? S Company. S Company, we've got 300 debit to accounts receivable. So we're going to go back out here. We're just going to redo this information by customer. So S Company is going to be here. So we are in AO33. Going to do this with a formula by saying equals, scrolling over, scrolling up. And we will find our amount. And that's going to be this 300. So there's S Company. We're looking for that 300. So there is that. So now S Company owes us 725. That's increasing our total down here. We're going to do the same for the rest of these. The next, I'm scrolling back over. The next is this 500 in N8. Going to make that green. We want to go to the subsidiary for L uh, Company and add uh, the debit of 500. So scrolling back over. We're looking for L company. So here it is. We want to be on the debit side. So we're in AK47. We're going to say equals, scroll left, scroll all the way up, and see if we can find this amount, which is here. So there's the 500 debit and enter. So that's increasing L company by the 500, increasing our total. Scrolling back over, scrolling back up. Now we need the 150 and the uh, 425. And so this is gonna be M company, and this is gonna be a credit. So this is what we got back. So we got the money and we credit what is what the receivable representing that, that 150 is no longer owed to us. So scrolling back over, scrolling back down, we're looking for M company. We're on the credit side in AP41. AP41 equals, scrolling all the way to the left, scrolling up, we will find this 150. So there's the 150 in uh, K9 and enter. Uh, note that you could be typing these in here uh, uh, and, and, and this one actually needs to be a credit as well. So I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna go to the end of it and put a negative sign to flip the sign and enter. So we're flipping the sign there. So you could put a negative 150 or you can put negative or equals negative K9 and that should pull over the 150, bring the negative, pulling the bounce down from 500 down by 150 to 350. All right, we got one more. We're not in balance yet here. We should be in balance after the last one, hopefully. So we've got the 425. That's going to be in P company. So we're going to credit P company. Scrolling back over, scrolling back down. We're looking for P company. So here it is. We are in uh, AL34. Rather than hitting equals, I'm going to put a negative. Scroll all the way to the left, scroll back up, and we are looking for that 425 there. So it's in K10 uh, and enter. So we are here in uh, AL34, double clicking on it. You could put a negative K10 to pull that over or equals negative K10, either will work. Bringing the balance from 1145 down by 425 to 720. Then our total, if we add all these up, is going to be the total of all of our customers. That adds up to 2,295. That then is what should be on the trial balance. So there's 2,295 here. So there's our cash receipts journal, one of the one of the more complex journals to put in place when we have transactions that are separate or different than just a normal sales or accounts receivable type of transaction, such as needing these other types of, of categories. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.